Thank you so much for connecting y'all guys. Uh, we are Ivan and Malika and we're holding these collective calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's Tuesday. We've got two amazing projects today to pitch here. And let me introduce them real quick. So first of all, we got Ananta, founder of Moi Protocol, and hopefully Mutas, also a founder of a project called uh, GGES1. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. So two amazing projects here to pitch. Let's start with our first project. I see Ananta joining us. And uh, please welcome, be the first one. Thank you so much for connecting, man. No, thank you. Thank you for the time. Uh... I'm Ananta Krishnan, go by AK, but then uh, I'm the founder of Moik Protocol. Let me share my screen and then just get started. Give me one second. Oh. So uh, Mo is the world's first context chain and uh, it's a base with 3XA platform. And uh, let me explain why we do this and what's the purpose of what we're doing. So what's the problem today? Today's networks for the last 50 years are built only for connectivity, whether it's blockchain or distributed systems, and they're not for intelligent interactions. What I mean by that is they are very good for sending emails and messages, not good for running our lives through it. So all the intelligence, either it is an asset or a state or the context is all fragmented in your applications, whether it's a smart contract or whether it's an regular web to application, all the intelligence are sitting in the application. So when we go to this new agentic world, when we want to move from one agent to another agent, the intelligence needs to sit at the network level and not at the application level. So that's why you get all this fragmentation, all the problems of uh, uh, liquidity issues and intelligence interactions. So most of the research today is all around just connectivity and not based on how do you sta statefully interact at the network level. So that's the problem today, but the new economy demands that we every interaction be intelligence. Your liquidity moves with you, your states moves with you from one, one interaction to another. So what have we solved? We have solved, uh, that's the problem. The solution is in stateful intelligent networks. Today, networks are completely stateless. They are like uh, dumb pipes that you draw. So today's internet is that. So it's not enough if you decentralize the infrastructure, you need to make the networks themselves intelligent. So this idea is move everything to an, a participant level concept. So every, all the intelligence now moves from all the apps, assets, all move from apps to the participant. So everybody has got something called a context object, which kind of allows you to remove the clutter. So you have memory, intelligence and context when you go from one agentic interaction to another agentic interaction. So if you go back to this picture, it was all over the place. If you go to, uh, if, if your intelligence is all over the place, now it's available in one place. So at a very high level, this is what we have done. We have made the network itself intelligent, not just the apps. And so participants are able to natively interoperate between multiple interactions that they want to do. And what does it solve? It solves three large market opportunities, very specifically, you know, the la large in crypto, the largest opportunity or the largest problem is safe DeFi and unified liquidity. So every DeFi protocol gets hacked, primarily because all the assets are stored as a, at the participant, at the smart contract level, it's an honey pot. So even recently, SUI got hacked. So this way to solve that is don't have an honey pot, move the assets to participants and manage and, and let the code do only the code work. That's a very large opportunity. The second large opportunity is around uh, Web 2 to Web 3 integrations. Today, it's either Web 2 or Web 3. It's not Web 2 plus Web 3. Assume I have an ERP application and I need to move it to blockchain to provenance, the entire application needs to move. There is no on-demand state management. So it's not like an APA call that you can make to just get the state. So that's possible in this new model because all the state is available at the participant level. And finally, your agentic interaction, either it's a, either it is model concept, context protocol or A to A, you have all connectivity defined, but then you don't have memory from one interaction to another interaction. So it makes safe AI, on-demand, uh, Web2 to Web3, and uh, safe DeFi. So those are the two, three large opportunities that this model can support. Uh, why can't others solve this? So look at layer one blaze, blockchains like Ethereum, Solana. So he built on the old paradigm. It's an app-centric model. So obviously, smart contracts hold the assets. And so there is an honeypot right at the start. So if, if then you need bridges and relays to move from 
one protocol to another protocol. So the bridge solutions, obviously bridges by definition are not decentralized, they create problems. Uh, enterprise blockchains like uh, Hedara and uh, uh, Hyperledger, uh, again, you need to build a smart contract and it can't, you can't then do an on-demand state management. So they're built for traditional applications, not for interaction applications. An agentic platform like Fitch.ai, primarily focus on connectivity, not stateful interactions. I've got really five minutes, but I'll very quickly go through this real world example there is an application called Zoo, which works on top of our protocol today. It is trusted email communication between Web2 and Web3, but uses the existing pipes, but uses blockchain for trust and provenance. How did we do this? A foundational computation paradigm called contextual compute. This is a breakthrough paradigm, which we have global patent on. We have researched it for the last several years before building this. Uh, I will leave all these slides out. There's traction momentum. I can share this. Uh, um, so the tokenomics, uh, so we have about, uh, it's a deflationary token, it's a utility token, uh, 10 billion tokens. And uh, obviously there's a vesting period for each one of us. The team gets the money at the end, the investor gets money at the first and, and, and the community along with that. So very, very well structured for long-term value and support from the team. What is the ask? We're trying to raise five to $10 million using DI apps. So to date, we have bootstrapped ourselves. We've invested about six and a half million dollars into this project. What is the progress today? So we got 2000 live notes running and we have about almost a thousand plus apps built on top of this at this point. So we got $75 million of TVL locked and we have a very large and growing developer community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your pitch, Anata. And uh, yeah, we've already got some questions. Uh, let me read them. Uh, so if the network itself is now intelligent, what does that mean for traditional smart contracts? Are they basically obsolete your world? So the smart contracts will still exist, but then it will just focus on the code, not on the state. So the problem today is the, the value and the code are con con in, in one place. So the smart contracts will provide the logic, but uh, the, your state management will happen at the participant and network level. So it, the, the smart contracts will kind of become like smart agents. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Hope it answers the question. Another one goes like this. No build contract sounds amazing, but how do you make that uh, that work without sacrificing composability or capital efficiency? Very good question. So obviously composability is what we have solved. So if you look at foundationally, let me go to this picture. Very good question, I think. Uh, so what we have done is Today, if you look at the today's internet, the networks are built only for information, which means the composability was at a messaging level, right? So for you to really interoperate, operate the composability needs to happen at value level. So we have clearly created composability through this, uh, uh, through participant owning everything. So value gets decomposed. So wherever the participant goes, their intelligence, context and value goes with them. So, so actually, that's actually the breakthrough. The ability to do composability of value, not just uh, information, is what will drive this new agent economy. We have solved it through something called IFPCP, a stateful internet protocol, and then build something on top of that. And the second question is, this works completely on an completely on an uh, simple hardware like in Raspberry Pi. So the the consensus mechanism is built around participant context and their reputation. So. Oh, from a standpoint of capital efficiency, it's uh, it's very good. It just scales and everybody is able to earn enough and your gas costing is pretty low as well. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, guys, if you want to connect uh, with the project after the call, here in the chat, you can find all the contact details. Yeah, so and, let me put um, my QR code as well if anybody is interested. Please, please reach me and I'm more than happy to take the call. So we have done something very foundational. We have written 160,000 lines of our own new code, new consensus, new data structure, uh, uh, new protocol, new execution, new civil resistance, primarily to drive this a digitally interacting model. That's the attempt here to make interactions smart, safe and intelligent. Thank you. Great. Thanks. And I think, yeah, we've got another question. Most networks die when real world complexi comple uh, complexity hits. How does MOI handle messy real life context without turning into a slow over engineered monster? <laughs> Brilliant question. So that's exactly why we solve this. So let, let me give you an example and answer this question. If I can take two minutes, real world adoption dies because today's blockchains are built for global consensus and global assets. So it works 
works for Bitcoin. So for example, if you have to build a blockchain application today or Web3 application for cab hailing, so the, the uh, a, a person who's hailing a cab in New York can potentially block out a person who's hailing a cab in San Francisco because everything needs to get in this global consensus model. So that's exactly what we saw, hyper-local consensus. So kind of be part of your uh, hyper-local knowledge that you have, but be still connected to the larger network like the way today's network works. So for example, everybody can build their own value networks, which has got context, which is hyper-local, but still be connected in the larger network. So it is truly distributed intelligence that solves the problem. Thank you for asking the question. Yeah, thanks. And there is another question. This feels like you're turning the network into an operating system. Is that the goal? And if, we, and if so, who is the developer in this new world? So the, the network becomes intelligent. Yes, network becomes sort of an operating system. The developers are the people who will, who will build those smart agents. You will still need developers. But then the idea is... Uh, the idea is to have a network because we are getting into this network world, so the network should have more intelligence. So the idea, but people will build, will, we still have to build D apps. We have to still, I call it as we call it as decentralized intelligent apps, not decentralized apps. So and and so we still will need people to build it. But uh, in today's world, if I were to buy a coffee, if I were to settle a coffee transaction with the blockchain, and also settle an house purchase transaction in Beverly Hills. Both of them are dealt exactly the same way. All resources come for all transactions. So it's a very, very app-optimized model. So this will be a very participant and a network-optimized model, which allows you to... So still, people will still have to build application, but then the developers will have more control. Their assets are safe. They're able to provide what the user wants at a very dynamic level. Okay, got you. Thanks. And... Um... Yeah, I think we still have some time for questions. Yeah, I have one, Malika. Please yeah. allow me uh, this one. So, Nanthi, it was really interesting. While we still have time, could you please elaborate on the team and the partners that you're working with and also future plans? Maybe Sorry. minutes or so. Thank you. Yeah, so my background, I was part of the initial team which built Oracle. So I've been working on distributed systems for a very long time. And then I was a partner with Accenture out of New York running their analytics practice for a while. So I've been in this journey from 2016, got interested because of Bitcoin's uh, ability to do large distributed Byzantine systems. So that's my uh, that's my uh, my background. Uh, along with me, uh, I, have, I have people who probably previously worked in Google. Uh, uh, I uh, say people uh, who worked with Polygon, uh, a team which uh, and and also uh, partners from PwC and 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 uh, ENY. So we have a combination of Web3 and enterprise experience, so that we are able to really uh, get, take it to market. Uh, from a uh, uh, roadmap standpoint, we already have three testnets done. We have 2,000 plus nodes running at this point, and we are in. in Data mainnet. We are going through audit at this point. The main we have people are building on it, uh, and 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 given the large code base, we need to finish the audit. So we we expect our uh, mainnet to be in in October November time frame. The TG is in expect to be expected to be in January. That's the uh, uh, two large roadmap items coming up right now. From a technology standpoint, we are working on three things for the next year. One, uh, quantum proof the. Uh, uh, signature itself so that uh, we don't have that problem kind of we have a unique approach on it because because we are context aware we will use quantum signatures for high value transactions and kind of use the trivial ECDSA for low value transactions at a, at a, uh, today that's a problem for a lot of blockchains because uh, it's a, if you make it quantum proof your size goes up your performance comes down here we are able to intelligently do this so we'll quantum proof one two we are also uh, looking at an HD, uh, 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 privacy enabled blockchain. What I mean by that is most people don't want, most organizations don't want to get into blockchain because they don't want to be on the public ledger on the payload. So, so ability for you to prove, but uh, keep the privacy. So that's the other feature that that's coming. And, uh, uh, and eventually a fully home or inputted uh, execution, but that's, that's ways off from a technology standpoint. Amazing. Thank you. And while we still have time, is there any uh, competition in this field? I was just curious. Uh, not really. We are one of the few, few guys. Nobody talks about participant centricity context where we are ahead of the game. The next generation of blockchains, which has got intelligence built into the network itself. Right? It's, I don't think most people are talking about it. Most people are on the connectivity layer, right? So I think uh, distributed intelligence is a very emerging area, but then uh, 
Uh, we are probably the closest to, from a market. I would say from an implementation standpoint, I don't see a chain today talking about this. Well, that's great. So go forward. Hopefully, Ananta, we will see you again next time uh, with the updates. So thank you so much for your time. It was really interesting. Thank you. Thank, thank, thanks for oh, that. Actually, so, sorry about the delay initially. I had too many tabs open and I, I just couldn't find my... <laughs> I was just received a question. Uh, if you don't mind, we can uh, wrap this up with the last one. So you yeah, said sure. that we can remember. Does that mean agents can actually build persistent memory across interactions? Yes. Like yes, that, that's exactly the point. Give agents the memory. Yes. Okay. Like, will my AI finally stop asking me what I like every time? Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, so yeah. the biggest problem, yeah, the biggest problem is we do, we do, we, we today we can work with an agent, but then tomorrow morning it completely forgets all the efforts that you put on it. So, this loss. So, and the way to do that is not attach a database to it. The way to do that is manage it at the network level through participants so that privacy is maintained. So it's not just attaching memory, attaching the memory the right way. Okay. Thank you so much, Anantha. As I said before, hopefully we'll meet each other uh, next. And uh, we're starting two days. So thank you so much for connecting today. See you in two days. Thank you, Malika, for conducting this call. And see you in two days, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, guys.